Hello guys, Nigel with you, Nigel's Modeling Bench. Welcome back. Part two now of this uh, stern anchor hull mod for the um, Trumpeter 1200 scale Scharnhorst and Neisnow. Um, as we all know, I covered this already in part one. The actual location and size and shape and everything of the stern anchor location is back here on the back end of the hull. Uh, as you can see it's cut out on this one, um, it's, it's, it's wrong, it's the wrong size, it's the wrong shape and it's the wrong location. So other than that it's perfect. So I've decided to make a little set because this is what I enjoy doing. Rather than just gluing bits of plastic together, this is what I enjoy doing is this kind of, you know, the engineering side of things. So what I've decided to do was make a new location, which I've done here, you can see this is a resin part, and it has a smaller anchor, it's a smaller smaller overall size and it's also a uh, um, in the correct position now uh, but I, the other thing the other challenge I wanted to give myself was could I make this sort of repeatable manufacturable or whatever so that anybody else that wants to do it can also do it so for a few quid you can do this too so I thought this is what I normally do I, I make something and then just sell a few of them for a few quid and it covers my sort of time in doing it and stuff and it helps me buy stuff for the channel as well so basically um what we've got here is this is like the template this piece here um goes in if I've, I've got one here that's yes i have got one here i thought i'd prepared myself this one here is removed you can just literally snap this off the plug and that's it's ready to use and what we've got around here as you can see there's a, a, a a frame around the edge and that's there to help you pull it off now obviously I can't fit this on mine because I've already cut it out but that would basically this shape on here that you can see on the front it's very difficult the camera's having a hard time with this because it's the, the uh, resin is such a light color but you can see the shape on the front there and basically that is basically a male of the female that's molded into the hull so you can literally that will literally click on it it clips on and it will stay there okay and then what you could do is draw around it with a with a line which I've shown you in the in the last video draw around it with a line up against the the bit that's touching the plastic as you can see there not the um, not the the ledge on the, the ledges on there is just to help you pull it out because it's it's quite stiff to pull out so um so that's that done you can throw that away you don't need that anymore okay don't use this to size your hole don't sort of get this and then use this to size your hole to make it fit perfectly what you need to do is mark out the line change it out like I showed you before um, cut it right out and then what you can do is take this piece here and you can literally break that off of there and then trim the bottom and use that okay so and then what you do is you use this to size that hole so what we're going to do, we're going to come along and we're going to take this and literally the resin's obviously cured better than I thought before. So what we're going to do is score it here. Just put a score in it and it should, there we go, it should snap off easily. If you want to take that piece off, you can grab an old pair of cutters and cut it off, but it's not really necessary. So there you go. You can see this is number one out of the mould. So that's that done. Okay, so that piece is now ready to fit. And then what you do is you can file sand whatever your hull to make this fit. And as you can see now, that goes in there and that fits. That fits in there lovely. Okay, now I might actually lift this up a bit because as you can see, it's sitting slightly low at the back there. This is designed to actually sit above the surface so you can sand it flat. So I may well lift this up or pack it out a bit of something. Might put a bit of plastic card down there. And the thing is to remember this, guys, when you actually do your cutting and sanding and everything, it doesn't need to be perfect because you're going to fill all this in with super glue, sand it all back, let it all cure, let it all sink and everything, then do it all again. I would recommend, I, would, I wouldn't recommend using Mr. Surfacer or fillers and stuff. They will sink back. I would recommend using super glue to get that to go in there. So I'm going to actually pull that up a bit. And I'm going to pack that out with a piece of plastic card so it's, it's actually quite good that I've gone wrong a little bit with my sanding because then you can uh, see how to put it right if you do the same. Um, I'd rather not have it in there under any stress so what I may well do is just come along with a sanding stick. This is a 400 grit zebra stick and believe me I wasn't planning to do this in this video 
And I'm just going to sand a bit of that away there. And that should make this fit a lot easier. There we go. It's not under tension now. So it'll just sit in there in the right place. I can put some plastic card in there to lift it up. Just a little tiny piece is all it needs. And there we go. That's that done. And then once it's glued in, we're going to check that this is all level with the, the deck here. So the deck sits down nice and flat. And we've got the hole in there because we've included in this part. We've included, as you can see there, you can look through it. You can see the holes. Come on, camera focus. You can see the holes is there. It goes all the way through. So first thing to do, let's do our anchor because it's going to be a lot easier to fit our anchor or dry fit our anchor into there as a piece rather than using the whole hull. So the anchor will come like this. OK, and basically it's on this little tiny pour plug. I keep the pour plugs as small as I can to make the cleanup easier. And also sanding this stuff is very, very bad for your health. It needs to be done. You need a mask. You need to wet it or an extraction booth or a combination of all three. So there we go. You can see now we've got a tiny little bit of cleanup on there. Tiny bit of cleanup on there. And then again with this 400 stick I can just come around and just clean that up just to get rid of those little raised areas just like that. And there we go and then a bit on there. Okay I don't need to sit and do the complete clean up for you because you guys know what to do. If you're feeling advanced enough in your modeling career modeling whatever to have a go at this then you don't need to see how to clean up some seams so that's that now you can see that in the middle obviously to mold it i had to mold it with it blunt i couldn't put a hole through it uh, well i could have done but it made a lot made life a lot harder so i've got a one millimeter drill here i'm just going to come in from the other side and just get that drill and just open up that center piece. It's not very thick. I'm just going to gently drill through there, not pushing very hard. And then with the corner of the knife, I can just come in and open that up to the square hole that it's supposed to be. You've got plenty of you've got plenty of um, square holeness there. Uh, the actual block is only in the middle of the hole, so you've got you can see from the front side where the square hole should be. Hopefully you can see that on there, but when you get yours you'll know exactly what I mean. So we just open that up to a square hole, okay, and I think these were very accurately cast. I doubt that they were absolutely spot on every time. So there we go. And that's that. And then we can turn it over, just check from the back side, make sure there's nothing in there. No little bits of flash or anything like that. And then that's that cleaned up. And you can see on the back side, we've got a square hole and you've got the two little legs either side to fit our shaft. So here's the anchor shaft or staff or whatever it's called. I'm going to lightly score the little mounting plug there. It's literally about five thou thick, this mounting plug. There's nothing to it. And then just pull the end away. And there we go. That's that. And then we can just use a knife just to clean off that little thin slither of pouring plug. And as you can see, that's that done. What you could do is get some primer on it, get some grey primer on it, and it'll show you up show up any bits you've got left behind but um, you don't need to sand this you can just scrape it and that's that done and I've also added the little loop on the bottom that hangs down when it's in the anchor and then that's going to go up into the anchor like that okay and it should fit snugly up inside because you've got those you've got these two legs either side you can see and they will go into those two recesses and then it will sit in there and then what you want to do is grab the anchor and see how much room you've got and you can see we don't have much flexibility there which is where it becomes difficult in fitting the anchor the standard plastic anchor because it's so big 
So basically we're just going to open up this hole, just widen it slightly at the top, just to give us a bit more pivoting action. And there's no science to this, it's just have a go. You can see now we've got a lot more movement on there. And you can see we've got more movement that way than we have this way. So I'm going to use that as the back. Remember, I already showed you this in the last video. And I'm going to fit that up through that hole and push the anchor up in. And we can see now that we actually need a little bit more. OK, the other thing you can do, if you want to, it's not strictly accurate, but you can sand the sides of those, these little bits that stick out, just sand a bit off the side of them to allow the anchor to sit in a bit more. And then that will sit up in that hole. And I'm going to, what I'm going to do is get my knife and just remove some resin from there, just up in there. And that should make life a bit easier. There we go, and it's also pulled the anchor to the centre as well. So there we go. We can keep removing plastic, or resin should I say, until it goes up as far as you want it to go. But you can see there, you can hold it in a shadow, you can see there how it's gone in. And it's all looking good. So happy with that. Um, we could also, if we want to, remove some material from the bottom end. I've just noticed here we've got... Some material can come out of there. Okay. So that can go in, that'll allow the, the anchor to go over a bit more, I think. There we go. You can see that sort of wedging up in there. And as you say, you can just keep removing material from here as much as you want to. It's never going to be seen because once the anchor is in there, that's hidden. And I'm just removing material from this side. There we go. You can see now that anchor's in there, lovely. Just how it should be. So we've done the anchor, we can put that to one side. Right. So now it comes to fitting this in, fitting this in. And I'm going to grab a little bit of plastic card. Where's my box of scrap? Got some scrap plastic card here, and here is some. Um, where's some ten thou? That's five thou. There's some ten thou there, but that's a circle. I don't want to use that if I can help it. There's a bit of ten thou there. Right. So what I'm going to do is fit this in here, and I'm going to wedge it up with a piece of ten thou card like that, and that'll make it sit higher, as you can see. Okay. So that's good. Right. So what we need to do now, in the moulding process, because it's got a hole through the centre, I have actually used some release agent to make it come out of the mould easier. So the first thing we need to do is get some Mr. Colour Leveling Thinner, or IPA or whatever, and just give this a really good clean. So it's got no grease on it, all around the edges, all around there. Okay, and give it a really good clean. I've just noticed that leveling thinner attacks this resin. That's interesting. So yeah, use IPA, don't use leveling thinner. You learn something every day on here, look. But that's fine, it's okay that it's attacked it slightly, it doesn't matter. And I'm going to clean the inside here because I've had all sorts in here. And I would suggest you clean yours as well because it may have mould release on it. Okay, we'll get that all nice and clean all in there. And there we go. So yeah, we've learnt now that leveling thinner attacks this resin, makes it soft. That's amazing. But it'll be fine when it dries. Okay, and then what I'm going to do with the end of my knife, I've got a pointed knife here. I'm going to come along and score this plastic. Scratch a load of X's onto it on the inside, and that'll make sure the super glue really gets something to hold onto. You could stick it in with super glue, epoxy, whatever you choose to use is up to you. I'm going to use 
the VMS Flexi CA because it's really good. Okay, so that's that gone in like that. And then we're going to do the same on this one. Just scratch, put some gouges in the surface. And all we're doing here is giving the glue a key. Just giving it a key to, to work with. With the VMS glue, you don't really need to worry about it too much. But, um, there we go. I doubt you can see that at all, but what we've done is just rough the surface. And I'm going to get my knife and just scrape off any little raised bits. Just like so. And the same in here, just scrape off any raised areas. What we could do is get a, a sanding stick, it's a little skinny stick here, and just literally, we're not, obviously not trying to sand it smooth, what we're trying to do is remove the raised edges that we've made. And I gave it a quick wipe over with the level and thinner again, just to get the, the dust out of there. And then just a quick dry fit before we stick this in. We can see now it fits in lovely. And I'm going to get my piece of plastic card, shove it in that hole. And that's how it's going to fit in there. Beautiful. Okay. So, right. So I'm going to use, this is the VMS Flexi 5K CA. The VMS range is available from Premium Hobbies. If you use the code NMB10, Nigel's model image 10, you get 10% off everything you buy there. So what I'm going to do is you would not normally do this. You would never, you would normally dispense this onto a, a Pringles lid or something, but I'm going to do this. I am going to use this out of the bottle, and you can see this is the slow one, it's thick. And the reason I'm using this is because I have plenty of time to work with it. Now, all of the VMS glues tend to be a little slow in my experience, except for the extra thin. The black thin, certainly, and that's what I like about them, because they don't cure straight away and it gives you time to manoeuvre the parts. So you can see I've got a good a good layer of glue on there. I don't know if you can see because of the colour differences. And I'm literally just going to place this in the hole like so. I'm going to get my piece of plastic card and shove it in there underneath. There we go. And then push this in. And that has gone in beautifully. Okay. And what I'm doing now is just feeling around the edge. And the part is designed so that it sticks out. It's not designed to sit perfectly flush with the face. It's designed to slightly stick out, which gives you something to sand off when it comes time to blend it. So you can see I've got it sticking out slightly here. You can see the knife picking up on it. I've got it sticking out slightly there. In fact, it could do with coming out a bit more. And there we are. Now I'm hoping that Trumpeter's moulds are, are, are accurate enough and we don't get mould shift. Um, they should all be the same. So you should get exactly the same result as me. If you don't, because there's mould shift, i.e. yours might be slightly thicker or thinner in this area than mine, so you may have to remove some material from the resin part, you may have to move, remove some material from the plastic part, you may have to pack it out, whatever. So at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. It's, it's just a case of getting it in there. It's not a structural item. It's got no support to do it. It's doing absolutely nothing. It's just sitting there. And once the deck's glued in, it's sort of another surface holding it down as well. So there we are. Now I've got that. I need to come out on this corner here. And as you can see, this is why I used the slow glue so that I've got time to play with it. At the end of the day, if it does end up slightly sub flush, not a problem. Bit of black super glue, use it as filler, it'll be absolutely fine. So there we go, that's that in. We'll just sit there and I would leave that now for a good, I, th I think I'll probably leave it for about 12 hours, let the glue dry. And then all we've got to do is fill the front in with super glue, trim this off, and uh, sand it flat. So I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so after about 10 minutes of just playing around, I cut that piece of plastic card off. Just checking with a sharp edge, I can just come along 
I can check that it is just proud. It's just proud so that when we come to sand it, we're not sanding the hull away. We sand away the resin until it blends with the hull. Now, if you come out too far, you'll end up sanding too much off the resin and losing that shape around there. If that's the case, it's just a case of carving it, shaping it, whatever. I believe this was probably a casting that was welded into the hull. Um, that was why I believe it's the same as Turpitz and Bismarck, because Bismarck was built in a different shipyard, but Scharnhorst, uh, I think noise now, and Turpitz, definitely Scharnhorst and Turpitz were built in the same shipyard at Wilhelmshaven. I think it's Wilhelmshaven. Um, it's Wilmhaven, I can't remember now. But uh, basically, yeah, they, um, I reckon they use the same casting or pressing or whatever it is. Um, you know, why would they have made a completely new part for four different ships that were being built? Well, at least three of them in the same shipyard. You know, it doesn't make sense. So I believe they're the same, and that's why I'm also doing this for Bismarck. Certainly, according to the anatomy of the ship, but they had the same anchor. So why would they not have the same recess? So there we go. Um, so that's there like that now, and I'm going to leave that to dry. The only thing I am going to do <coughs> is come along with a a thinner super glue. Um, this is the Flexi 5K Extra Thin, and in fact I've never used this yet. I don't know how thin it is, but I hear it's absolutely amazing stuff. That's why I've got it. Um, so what I'm going to do is just run this down here and down here and let it capillary around there. And I'll just take out any gaps. You can see it running into the bottom of the hole there. So I'm just going to tip it up and let it come back into that joint. Okay. So there we go. So I'm going to leave this hull on its side with the front up in the air, with the bow up in the air if I can. Let's see if I can manage that. Try and support it like that somehow and let that dry. I'm not going to use accelerator because in my belief accelerator, I'm just going to mop up the spill there. Um, in my belief accelerator makes the glue more brittle. So uh, we don't want brittleness here, we want it to just bond. But we can see there how it's all run around, filled in any gaps and, uh, and there we are, we're good to go. So we can check the deck for fit, and if the deck doesn't quite fit, we can sand away. I've tried to leave tiny bits of material on everywhere so you can sand away rather than have to do loads of filling and stuff. So I'm going to let that dry out, and then I'll see you back when we're ready to start filling and sanding. Right, a few hours have passed, and as you can see now, it's in there. It's all nice and solid. You can see that I've got finger marks here where I've been rubbing it to see the, um, you know, I've got a step there. If you want to protect yours, by all means do, but I didn't bother protecting mine because I'm sanding all this off anyway. I'm going to remove all these portholes, remove them because these are too far down. I think they should be further up. Um, and the the horizontal position of them is all over the place as well. So you may decide you don't care about that. I do. So basically all you need to do is get some masking tape like so and cover up the edge. This is just some old masking tape I've got here on the bench that I use for masking the Sea King. So um, you can see that so you can protect it and then when you just when you finish just tear it off. But I'm going to put there now anyway because I want to do this with the the thin cement or the thin super glue should I say. This is the Flexi 5K CA XT Thin and I think I filmed it. I ran it around the inside as well. I'm sure I filmed it. Um, now here I'm going to have to be more careful than I was on the inside because obviously you don't want it running around and dripping off everywhere. So what I'm going to do is try and build a kind of kind of fence if you like. So if I put that there, that should stop. So I've got these old bits of tape just stuck to the side of the bench over here to the left of your screen. I'm just going to put this here just to act as a kind of fence so that the glue, if it is going to run around, it will run onto there and it will drip off. I'll put a piece behind it as well. Let's even rip that one. I'll give it a bit more support. So any glue won't actually run around and it'll just you know, like a drip rail on the window so it'll just run along and stay on there. So I'm going to put that on there to stop that happening. Um, and maybe some over the top there as well to stop it. To stop it going down. There we go. Right, so that's that. Now, 
got this thin glue here. Okay, so that's there like that. And I'm going to wipe the top off on a bit of cloth because I don't want this to get the top all um, getting sticky. And I'm going to use my applicator and I'm just going to put this in here. It'll probably melt the black glue beneath it so it'll probably show up. But the reason I'm using the thin is I want it to run into the joint. As you can imagine, we've got a joint there which is the thickness of the plastic, which is a good sort of two or three mil wide, not wide, deep. So I want to make sure it actually penetrates. Ooh, misses. <laughs> I want to make sure it penetrates right down into the depth. So the whole, the whole joint, if you like, is full of glue rather than just having it on the surface. If you can imagine, if it's just on the surface, if you sand, sand away, you'll probably just find a load of holes. Which is one of the problems with using Mr. Surfacer 500 when you use that for filling seams. Quite often it doesn't go in, it just sits on the surface. And then when you sand it away, you find loads of holes because it's just literally sat on the surface. It doesn't go in. And here I want it to go in. I've got to make sure here I get the glue on both sides of that piece of plastic card that's there. Because I want it to go in both sides. Okay. As you can see, you can see nothing on the surface because it's all going down in. You can use anything for this. I'm using this glue applicator, which is a glue looper. You can use a cocktail stick or a knife blade or anything. Knife blade is actually really good for stuff like this because if you get a curved blade like this one here, you basically dip it in the glue. And then what you do is put the knife onto the groove and just roll the knife like that and it actually puts the glue into the joint for you just where you want it it's really good for photo etch for doing boxes where you're going into a corner or something so there you go we'll just grab our cotton bud and just wipe the excess off the surface there so there we go so that's that there so as you can see already I don't know if you can see in the light, but it's already it's shrinking back. And this is what we need to try and avoid. Get our knife again. Get some in there. As I say, I haven't used this glue before, but my favourite super glues are thin. And my favourite super glue manufacturer is VMS. So this stuff should be awesome. You can see a slight darkening. What it's doing, it's dissolving the the black super glue that's on the Pringles lid underneath it. So there we are. So this is not only filling, it's also gluing. So again, we're going to leave that to dry. Again, I'm not going to use um, accelerator. Be warned. One of the one of the re maybe I had that piece across the top. One of the reasons I've took that out was. When I was actually making the this thing, I put a piece of plastic card on the back of it to act as the flange that we're using on here when I was making the, the baster. And um, I, I sprayed some extra, some extra thing, I sprayed some accelerator and it made the trumpeter plastic very brittle. So be very careful. Um, I know it can affect some clear. So be very, very careful what you're doing. We'll get some of this thin on the edge of this blade and we'll just run that down in there to make sure make sure it's gone in. Just want to make sure it's gone into that joint. And there we go. There we are. So that's that done. There we go. So we can leave that to dry now. Let it all go back. Just leave it alone for a few hours. Let it all dry back. 
um, and then put some more on. And this is the whole secret of getting a good job is letting everything dry and let it all sink and then you can put some more on top. You know, that may be sort of starting to get touched dry now. In fact, it is pretty much, it's, it's, it's still tacky. If I, if I leave it for another 10 minutes, I'll probably be able to sand it and then come back tomorrow and find it's all sunk. You can see there again, you can see if I catch it in the shadow, you can see it's all shrinking down into the gap. So there we are. Okay, so um, that's that. I have a feeling I'm going to have to do a slight amount of reshaping on there, but uh, not worried about that at all. So there we go. Right, let's uh, leave that to dry and then I'll come back. Hey, about two hours later now, we're back. And uh, if you're watching this, Rob, um, you know who you are. You are the first person to take the plunge. And while I've been doing this video, you have bought one of these from me. So uh, congratulations on your purchase. So all I'm going to do now is start sanding. And you can see that we've got the, the hole protected with the tape, obviously. And... What I'm going to do is sand this out roughly and this is what I would advise anyone out there to do as well and what I'm going to do is get a pencil nope that's not going to work I'm going to have to use a pen which I don't like doing because it sometimes stains and then comes through the paintwork what I'm doing is I'm just making marks on the resin so that I can see what I'm actually sanding and then when I've when I've actually sanded out the glue, you can see there we've got a raised edge of glue and you can see the the the, the lines of, of, of um, ink where it's left. So I'm just, just gently going in and sanding. Now I have a feeling that I may have to reshape this half moon here because if you remember I've pushed this up. So in pushing it up what I've actually done is made this step here larger than it would normally be so we shall see if that's the case it's not a problem it's not an issue and you may have to do the same um, this is all just part of doing things like this you, you you sometimes have to fettle it doesn't just go straight on I'm going to get a piece of old denim this is a piece of a cut off an old pair of jeans just to keep my sanding stick clean this is a sort of half worn out 400 grit stick. What I'm going to do with that black pen, I'm going to make a line there. And then I'll be able to see if I've sanded out any of that. Let's get rid of that tape there. We don't need that there anymore. We're not putting glue on at the moment. I'll leave that because obviously you don't want to start sanding the hull. But what I want to do is just sand out the resin at the moment and not sand the hull at all which is why I've left it proud so as you can see we're sanding the resin we're sanding the super glue but we're not actually touching the plastic you can see the, the super glue is still on the plastic and the reason I'm doing that is because I think even though it's super glue and it's not Mr. Surfacer or something there is an issue with using Mr. Surfacer, okay? I, I absolutely love Mr. Surfacer. The problem with it is you put it on, you sand it back, and initially it will sink, okay? So you can put it on, you can leave it for a month, okay? And it's not going to sink after a month. You sand it, you get it all nice and flat. When you spray your primer on, if it's a hot primer, if it's a lacquer primer, whatever, it will burn into the Mr. Surfacer and you'll get this line. And that is why I now use super glue. But what I found, if you're following my seeking build, today is October the 6th, 2023. Um, if you're following my seeking build, you will see in part 15 that after I put the gloss coat on, if you remember, I did that work on fitting those doors in and getting them to blend in nicely. I fitted them with, I glued them in, but then I fit, I, I filled them with super glue but I've actually got sink marks where the super glue is now I'm not sure if that's the polystyrene sinking because it's glued with Tammy extra thin or it's the super glue shrinking so what I would suggest which is what I started to say just now if you've got one of these sets and you're doing this I would suggest to go as far as I'm going now 
basically get rid of the super glue on the face of the resin I'm being careful not to sand the end of the degaussing cable there because I don't want to damage that I'm not sure for all the I'm not going to call you rivet counters because I think it's taken as a rude term these days I'm going to call you accuracy hunters <laughs> um, I'm not sure if that degaussing cable should come back further does it come back further on this side yes it does just a touch that's a shame so yeah if I put this sand stick looking vertically down across the degaussing cable you can see that it's sort of it's not perpendicular to the satellite so that side probably does need extending slightly where they put that horrible big bloody anchor slot in there it's sort of messed up the position of the well it's messed up everything they've got one less porthole on the top and the degaussing cable is just too short what I've done here, I've sanded out the resin, I've sanded away the super glue. I've got a nearly perfect joint, but you can see already, you can hear already that super glue there is shrinking. So what I would suggest is you fit this in, go as far as I've gone, don't touch the top edge yet, go as far as I've gone and leave it. Do your other work. We're going to go on and work on the bow now. Um, that won't involve any resin parts at all. That's just going to be sanding and sanding and some more sanding. Um, maybe a bit of cutting. But uh, I would suggest you go this far and then leave it. OK, perhaps take the masking tape off because it may leave glue residue behind, which can be a pain in the ass. But um, I have a feeling I may have to do some reshaping here because I've pushed it up. Obviously, this which should have been down there is now sticking out a bit so it's not the end of the world all you have to do if it needs reshaping is come along with a knife and just gently just scrape that back in on the real thing if you look on the um, on the Scharnhorst kit as molded I can only show you on here because I don't have the part anymore you can see they have a step they have it kind of step back in off the hull. It's a sharp step. It's not like that. It's actually kind of blended in. It's almost like it's blended into the into the surface of the hull. So that's what I've done with this. I've I've made it more correct than than trumpeter have. But it does actually come back here on quite an angle. I think we might be okay actually. Yeah, it's going to be absolutely fine. I don't have to reshape that that circle at all. So I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to call it a day for this video. Um, basically because all that remains now is to leave this to dry. Or leave it to cure, should I say. And I'm going to leave this for at least a week. At least a week. Just to make sure I don't get any shrinkage. Because, as I say, on my Sea King, I have seen some shrinkage. I am just going to lightly sand over here just to remove the super glue from the resin not from the plastic I'm not trying to blend it in I'm just removing the super glue from the top of the resin there we go I'm going to take this tape off so that I get glue residue left on there because it's going to be on left for a couple of weeks as I say or even more because I now need to get on with the Bismarck um, and what I'll do I will quickly show you my Bismarck hull because that has received a lot, a lot of work. I'm just going to remove a bit of excess glue there. I think that's what I got on there when I initially glued this in. It's not um, part of the, the filling work. You can see it there. There's some clear super glue sticking out there. I'm just going to get rid of that. The trouble is some of these clear super glues can dry absolutely rock hard. And they're like bloody trying to sand down titanium. So there we are. So we're going to leave that like that. And we can see we've got our we've got our new piece in there, all looking lovely. Much better than the uh, than trumpeter's offering. And then we can, if we're going to keep our portholes, scuttles or whatever you want to call them, I call them portholes. If we're going to keep them, then what we need to do is drill another porthole here because if you remember I said this one should go. It's actually not the fact that they've let, put an extra one in. They missed one out. 
So if you look on here, the pitch between these portholes is about that's about 16 millimeters across two. So it's just under eight. It's just it's just under 16 millimeters across two. So it's just under eight. So if I come in here, there's going to be another porthole. Let's come to the top edge of them. In fact, let's go to just under eight there and then I'll just make a mark there. So you're going to drill another porthole there. And if you look at pictures of Scharnhorst, that's pretty much accurate. But I believe these portholes are too far up or down. I can't remember now. But if you move them around, they should come to the right place. So there you go. So that's the correction done. And we've got rid of the smiley face. Now, what I'll do, I'll go and grab my Bismarck hole and just show you the work I've done on that quickly before we end this video. And then I shall say goodbye. OK, so here's my Bismarck hole. And as you can see, it's got lots of finger marks inside, but it's all been wet sanded. We'll start by looking at the stern. You can see the stern anchor there. As I've said before, the Scharnhorst anchor recess is like a bunny rabbit, and this is like a kitten. <laughs> that is not in any way at all accurate. The position's better than Scharnhorst. They got it in the right place by the look of it. They got that extra porthole in, but I don't think the actual... Um, I do think the actual, well, I know the actual shape of that is awful. And the anchor is too small <laughs> for Bismarck. So there we go. Now, I'm just going to quickly show you, this is a work in progress. I've been working on this for years. Um, and this is a completely reshaped rear hull. Um, I don't have another kit, so you can see the comparison, but there is quite a major difference between this stern area and the... Um, and the, and the kit moulded part. There's a lot of material been added here. So basically there's a lot of material added here to build this up here. Um, I've completely changed the shape here. I've completely changed the shape of these. This actually needs to be done on Sharon Horse as well. This is all wrong. Um, if you're like me, then what do I call it? An ac accuracy researcher, accuracy desirer, whatever I call it. Not a rivet counter. Um, so there we go. That's all reshaped there. As you can see from the kit hull. Um, so I've done that and as you can see it's all like rough sanded and everything and I've got bits and pieces I need to fill in. I've got areas like this where the plastic's so thin. Basically what I'll do there is I'll cut a section out and replace that with super glue. Because the trouble is when you actually use wild action glues on plastic car and it sort of becomes a mush and you can't repair it. So I will actually end up cutting that area out and using super glue. The Pontos set for Bismarck gives you all the portholes and all the ladders and everything that you need. So you don't have to worry about losing any of that detail because you can sand it all out. Moving further along, <clears throat> you can see here that they didn't put any docking keels in the hull of Bismarck. And they haven't put any docking keels in the hull of Sharnhorst either. So there we go. You can see that I've actually added docking keels. I'm trying to use shadows here so you can see what I'm pointing out. You can see there's some shadows and you can see it blends up there. If you don't believe this is true, go and look at some pictures of Tirpitz, um, where she sat in her sunken state when she turned over, and you'll see what I mean. And then we've got this sharp corner here. It's totally flat bottom, as you can see. That's all car body filler in there. And then you can see that, that sharp edge there comes out. And then it goes along here, blends into the radius of the hull and then becomes a sharp corner again as we get to the towards the bow. You can see we've got a repeat of the hill. So basically you've got two long members there and then you've got two long members there and then the rest all just fares into it. And when we come along to the bow, you can see we've got the same here. We've got an edge, an edge coming down like that. And then here we've got an edge we've got another flat plate there and then it all blends into the bow and then we've got the actual bulbous bow here which is all wrong on the kit it's terrible and the actual shape of the actual hull in the bow is terrible you can see here where I've actually cut through it if I've got some photographs what I actually do any more work on this I'll show some photographs 
but I've actually cut through it, squeezed it in, screwed some plastic card in there. I think it's even aluminium strips I've put in there with epoxy and pulled all the hull in. And I've got these pieces of plastic in here to keep the, the upper surface apart so it doesn't just all pull in, so it's only the bottom. Basically the hull is much too fat in this area here. So if I can get it on the floor, I can show you perhaps, I'm not sure if I can, but you can see, let's go upside down. You can see we've got the lovely sharp bow now, the sharp stem that Bismarck should have and Scharnhorst should be the same. So what we also need to put a little cut in there for the, um, for the radar thing. But uh, you can see where it's been stood on the carpet. But basically there's bits of tape and everything left on there. This, this here, this area here is completely reshaped. You can see all the sanding marks. I've completely hacked away at this area here to get that nice slender Atlantic bow, which is such a major feature of Bismarck and Scharnhorst. So guess what I'll be doing to Scharnhorst? Yeah. And also the side profile on Scharnhorst is wrong. This one is much better. Um, but uh, in Scharnhorst, we've got this vertical lip at the front which shouldn't be there it should come up to a point so we've got some work to do on that and i think that's going to be the subject of my next video on Scharnhorst. but um there we go and these are the the doors that are missing on Scharnhorst. you can see here there is i mean i keep comparing the two there is so many similarities between the two um i have a feeling that the design was kind of red across because when you actually put Scharnhorst hull on top of Bismarck, I mean, yeah, Scharnhorst is narrower, but it's just like it's like his little sister, you know. I mean, when when you look at the holes, when you look at the bow there together, you know, and then you let's try and turn these around. These things are huge. If you look at the stern, get the shard horse flipped around a minute. When you look at the stern, you can see, you know, definite similarities there. Look at the shape here. I mean, this, this is incorrect. It will be like that when it's done. But you can see that, the, you know, it's all very, very similar. This here, this here, the position of the, the rudder. The um, anchor, not the rudder. You know, it's um, it's all very, very similar. And as I say, Bismarck was built in the Blom and Voss shipyard. Um, Scharnhorst and Tirpitz were both built in the Wilhelmshaven or Wilhelms, whatever it is, um, shipyard. So, uh, yeah. And you can see there the difference in the, the stern anchors. So you can see why I've got my work cut out to get that one looking like that one. <laughs> so thanks for watching guys I hope you've picked something up from that um, no doubt you'll all be asking to see more of the Bismarck hull uh, yeah I'm, I'm not going to be doing that but uh, I will it's a kit I must do I've got lots and lots of aftermarket for it so um, here we go but I do love doing these hulls and then I kind of put them back in the box nothing more with that so enjoy. I actually that's my second Bismarck the first one I did I sold um and just so you can see how I've done it, there you go. What I've basically done is cut through where it needs to be flat, where the, where the Bismarck hull is rounded off. I've cut through and replaced it with plastic card, as you can see here. So, um, and I will probably do the same on Scharnhorst and I will video it so you can see it. And I'll do all the videoing. Obviously, I need to be more careful when I do Scharnhorst because this has got quite a lot of filler in it. It's very, very thin, but um, I've used car body filler purely because it dries so fast and it doesn't all shrink and everything. So uh, car body filler is your friend for stuff like this. And this is all um, Halford's uh, filler primer, this this orangey brown stuff. But um, We're getting there. I get it out in the summer, I do some work on it and then I put it back in its box. So but you can see that even though Bismarck was Trumpeter's first 1-200th ship, I think, um, well, first proper one they did all the, the the other the russian stuff and that didn't they but um you know you can see they've got all the uh the vents and everything in the sides which they've completely missed on sharon horse so they've kind of gone backwards in a way but anyway that's that thank you for watching 
as I say, if you want to get one of these, I've decided the set's going to be £12.50 plus postage. Um, and I'll be doing one for Bismarck as well, and that one will be the same price. So there you go. Hope you've enjoyed that. If you want one, let me know. Um, I'm not going to be making them forever. I'm only going to make a few. So we see where we go from there. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.